In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do 3D visualizations like this using ArcGIS Pro. Subsequently, I will also show you how to drape line features like roads and rivers and things like that over the 3D surface to get that realistic outlook. And finally, if you're interested in giving your 3D model a bit of a block type outlook, I'm also going to show you how to drape a grid like this over your 3D surface to obtain a 3D model like this. Now, if that all sounds interesting to you, join us in this tutorial and that's exactly what we'll be covering from almost scratch in the next few minutes. So before we get started with any of that, we're going to need some Illuvision data. And I've done uh, quite a few tutorials showing you how to download uh, Illuvision data absolutely for free and uh, you can check them out in the links given in the description below. Or if you want to follow along uh, using the Illuvision data that I'm going to be using for this tutorial today, I'm going to provide a link to download that as well. So you're more than welcome to just directly use it and follow along with this tutorial as well. All right, so with that all out of the way, uh, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is assuming that you guys have either downloaded your own Illuvision data or you have downloaded the Illuvision data that I'll be using for this tutorial today. I'm going to head over to Catalog Pane and I'm basically going to make a folder connection to the folder in which I have kept all those downloaded files, which in my case is going to be this file right here and click OK. And the Illuvision dataset that I'll be using today is uh, this clipped Illuvision 1 TIFF file. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it over here onto my workspace. So this is basically the Illuvision dataset that I'm going to be working with uh, today for this tutorial. And it's basically a Illuvision dataset where you can see that the Illuvision values basically vary from negative six, tw negative 26 all the way up until 483 meters. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter the appearance. As you can see right now, it's just basically varying the elevations from black to white with black colors representing the lowest elevations and the areas with white color representing the highest elevations and everything in between accordingly following the gradient over here. So to change the symbology, what you can do is you can just uh, right click over here and go to symbology. And we're not going to spend too much time doing this. Just uh, go to color scheme and maybe pick a color scheme that's more sort of representative of illusion values, I guess. I'm inclined to go with uh, something like this that's varying from green to well, brown to whites, I would say. And uh, if you would like to invert the color scheme, uh, you could just click uh, right over here so that the greens would be representing the highest elevations and vice versa. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that uh, appears to be more visually interesting. And so I'm just going to stick with that. And as the next step, I'm also going to create a hill shade using this DEM that I have. So if you've never heard of the concept of hill shade, hill shade in ArcGIS Pro is basically a 3D representation of terrain surface, uh, but created by sort of uh, illuminating it with a hypothetical light source. I mean, you could just think of it like that. And this technique is often used to visualize the variations in ter terrain by, well, simulating how the sunlight would cast shadows over the landscape. And uh, you could actually generate something like that using an Illuvision dataset uh, like this. So to do that, all you have to do is just uh, go to view and you can head over to this geoprocessing toolbox and you could just type hillshade and I'm just going to go with this hillshade under spatial analyst tools. And as you can see, it just needs an input raster. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it over here. And uh, I'm not going to change the output raster. So you can actually make changes to this azimuth and altitude. These two parameters are actually going to uh, impact how the appearance of the hill shade is actually going to come out uh, once you run this tool. So azimuth, as, as it states over here, it's the angle of the light source. So depending on the angle that you specify over here, the areas where the shadow is going to get casted is actually going to be different. So you, you have full control over how to specify the azimuth uh, as well as the altitude as well. As a starting point, let's just not worry about uh, these parameters too much because no matter what you specify over here, it's going to cast some shadows to some parts of the 
of the landscape. So let's just go ahead and run this tool. So you can basically see how the hill shade uh, appeared. And if you would like to make some changes to the appearance of this hill shade raster, you could right click and uh, go to symbology. And I'm still going to retain it to be black and white. However, when it comes to However, when it comes to the stretch type, uh, you probably might be able to test out a number of different uh, stretch types. So let's say if I wanted to go with uh, display values between a specified number of standard deviations, something like this, uh, you can see that that actually kind of affects how the hill shade is going to look. And you can specify the number of standard deviations here. So let's just say if I say one, it's going to look like this. And uh, if I say two, it's going to look something like this. So it's all just for visualization purposes and uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this clipped elevation raster on top of this hill shade raster. And now you can see that the hill shade raster is completely covered by this clipped elevation raster. So as the next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to raster layer, make sure that this clipped elevation layer is selected. And from here, I'm going to increase the transparency just so that we'll start seeing that hill shade layer underneath. But I'm not going to bump up the uh, transparency too much until we lose the details of that clipped elevation raster. So I think something like this right around 47% seems to be a nice sweet spot so that underneath you can see the heel shade and it gives that sort of 3D outlook. But keep in mind that we haven't still jumped into creating any 3D visualizations. We are still on a 2D plane, but we're just trying some tricks here and there to improve the, the 3D-ness, if you will, of this raster dataset that we have. And as the next step, I'm just going to uh, go to map and select add data. And now I'm going to specify my elevation source layer. Now, when you do this, as, you, as, it, as it says right over here, it, it adds an elevation source layer to the ground. So I'm going to select the same elevation dataset that I have right over here, clipped elevation dash one from my working folder. And I'm going to set that to be sort of the reference for getting, for obtaining the elevation values later on when we create the, the 3D outlook. So let's just go ahead and select that and click OK. And when you do that, you won't really see any visual changes, but right over here, you can see that a new sort of tab or a section basically get, gets opened up. And now it uh, indicates that the ground values are tied to whatever the elevation values that are given by this clipped elevation one diff raster. After you sort all of that out, next you can go to view and you can go to convert. And now you can convert this entire thing into a local scene. So with that process, it's going to take us to a separate section. Uh, as you can see over here, it gets opened up. In addition to the 2D map that we have right over here, a new section opened up called Map 3D. And the interesting thing with Map 3D is that now you have quite a lot of control over how to change or how to navigate around this raster. If you use your, if you use the scroll wheel of your mouse and while clicking on the scroll wheel, if you try to move your mouse up and down, you can actually start getting this kind of 3D orientation and and you'll very quickly get the hang of it. As you can see, you can just move it around and uh, you can zoom in and out. And if you just want to tilt your view like this, you have to use your scroll wheel, click on it and you can move the surface around like this. And you can see that if I untick this clipped elevation one TIFF, it's actually not going to it's now no longer displaying that, that sort of 3D outlook. Uh, it's just going to be, you're still going to have all the controls, but it's just going to be a flat surface. But if you go ahead and activate this, you can see that the actual 3D outlook uh, comes back. And uh, you can make a number of changes uh, into this outlook as well. So for example, uh, if you select ground from here, and if you go to elevation surface layer, from here you can you can boost the 3D outlook uh, by increasing the vertical exaggeration. So as it says over here, it's it's basically an exaggeration factor, which you can set right over here. So let's see if I set this to be two, it boosts the 3D appearance. And if I set this to be three, uh, you can see that it actually increases even further. 
just keep in mind that it's not really changing the actual raster values but it's just vertically exaggerating just for visualization purposes and if you check uh, this section right over here so there are two sections one is called 3d layers and the other one is called 2d layers so what has happened is that right now this clipped elevation raster has been just basically draped over this clipped elevation one ground surface so if i untick this what you're going to see is basically just the hill shade being draped over the ground surface. And if I untick that as well, you're just going to basically see the base map uh, being draped over the ground surface. So I'm just going to activate these two back again. And uh, in addition to this, as I told you at the beginning of this, uh, of this video, if you have any sort of line features that you would like to line or even polygon features that you would like to kind of drip over this surface what i can immediately think of is line features because you can see that things like rivers tend to follow the natural topography so if i head back to my catalog pane if i open up this rivers shape file which i also happen to have over here you can see that the only thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that you bring it under under this uh, 2d layers and it's automatically going to get draped over the surface now you might not be able to see it clearly because of the issue of the colors blending properly but if i make this reverse shape file stand out a bit more by changing its color to be something like this and potentially increasing the line width as well Let's put this to be 1.5. Yeah, now you can actually start seeing the river lines. And I reckon I might have to increase this to about, let's see, 3. And you can basically, and you can see how the river line basically follows this lower depression areas and uh, eventually it ends up in this uh, lower ground elevations. It's the same for this line as well. And uh, if you look at this river, you can see that probably the upstream areas are around here and then eventually it flows down and uh, follows the path to drain out into the sea uh, from around here and as i told you at the beginning if you would like to kind of give a block type outlook to your 3d model what you could do is you could actually create something called a fishnet now it, now a fishnet is basically nothing but a fancy word for a grid that you can create and drape over your 3d surface so to do that i'm just going to head back to my map view from here and i'm going to head over to geoprocessing and in here i'm just going to search for that tool it's called fishnet we'll create fishnet and what you basically need is the extent that you're going to use to create this fishnet and i would like to have that covering the extent of my clipped elevation raster so you can go ahead and select the extent to be that and uh, quite a number of things get filled up automatically and what you can specify is basically the cell size width and the cell size height and uh, if I maybe take go to map and take the measuring tool roughly I would like to have let's just go with maybe a, a grid size of about 50 meters so cell size with, I would say, or maybe let's just make it 60 meters and height is 60 as well. And uh, you can see that automatically it'll calculate how many cells are required for it to cover the entire extent. So you don't really have to worry about any of that. And uh, the only thing that you need to specify is basically the output feature class. And uh, I'm just going to name it as fishnet grid let's just uh, call it that save and we can just go ahead and run so there's going to be a point shape file and there's also going to be a line shape file as well and i'm starting to think that maybe the grid size that i specified was a bit too small so i'm just going to go ahead and remove both of these and let's just go ahead and rerun this and then this time i'm just going to name it as fishnet grid r1 and the cell size i'm just going to drastically increase the cell size i'm just going to set it to be let's say about 200 meters by 200 meters and click run 
Yeah, that seems to be quite all right. And I don't really need the the point features, so I'm just going to deactivate that. And what I need is basically just the, the line features. So you can see this is the fishnet grid. And we can go ahead and change the appearance. I'm going to set a color that's not too intrusive. And set the line width to be about, let's say, 0 0.6 be something like this and and now what we need to do is we need to bring this fishnet grid r1 over to our local scene which is this map 3d so what we can do is we can right click and go to copy and head over to map 3d and just under map 3d click paste and as you can see it's going to appear under this under our 2d layers and automatically it's going to get applied to the model as well and you can see the way how it got applied is basically just got draped over the surface over the 3d surface which kind of gives it a block 3d model type outlook and you can always go ahead and change the colors as well if you think that the color that we selected previously is not really uh, visible enough you can maybe increase that as well and that's going to take effect yeah i think that's much better yeah that seems to be much better and uh, this is exactly the type of outlook that I was after. And of course, as I said, if you want to kind of bump up the 3D-ness of this, uh, this model or this surface, you can always go back to ground, elevation surface layer. And let's go and set this to be about five. And that's just going to increase the vertical exaggeration to create a model that looks like this. So I hope you managed to learn something new uh, through this tutorial. And as you're following along, if you did come across any issues that you would like to discuss, you can add a comment down below. And as I told you guys, I'll be providing you with all of these data sets. So instead of just watching this video, you can actually follow along step by step and see whether you could produce the same outputs that I'm producing right now using ArcGIS Pro. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. I'll see you again with another tutorial soon.